the Sony PlayStation 2 or PS2 to this day remains the best selling games console of all time, with over 155 million units sold, but did you know it was once used to build a supercomputer? In this video, we'll have a look at one of the biggest PS2 supercomputers built, what it was used for and why they used the PS2 to build it. We'll also have a look at a rumour Saddam Hussein was trying to build one in Iraq to control missiles in the early 2000s. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps this small channel grow. In 2003, a team of researchers from the University of Illinois created a supercomputer known simply as the PS2 cluster. This was made up of 70 PS2s mounted in racks and connected together with a networking handled by two HP switches. The team theorised it was capable of providing 0.5 teraflops of computing power. This was quite a respectable number at the time, and put it within the top 500 most powerful computers. This photo shows a member of the team standing with one part of the supercomputer, the PS2 cluster. So what was it used for? It was mainly used for processing satellite data, as supercomputers often are. This is because the amount of calculations per second needed to process data of this size needs much more resource and power than a standard PC can provide. It was also used for simulating fluid dynamics and other bespoke tasks the researchers had. So why would you use the PS2 to build a supercomputer rather than just use PC hardware? One of the main reasons is the power it offered for its price point was virtually unmatched. The CPU in the PS2, known as the Emotion Engine, had a clock speed of 294 MHz in the original model, which was good for its time. Also, retailing at $300 on release, it was far more cost effective to buy several of these and link them together rather than paying for the hardware of other supercomputers at the time. The PS2 cluster I mentioned would have only cost approximately $21,000 if the units were brought new. This is a fraction of what supercomputers with similar specs at the time would cost. Another reason it was used was the PS2 allowed for custom software development using the Linux operating system which was officially supported by Sony through the release of the Linux kit for PlayStation 2. This provided researchers with the flexibility to develop and run custom applications on the PS2 for various high-performance computing tasks. A final reason the PS2 was used was scalability. It was very easy for researchers to add another few consoles to the system if they needed some extra resource and power. The PS2 was such an effective device to use when building a supercomputer that there were rumours at the time that Saddam Hussein had ordered 4,000 PS2s of his own to build a supercomputer capable of controlling missiles. Interestingly, Japan had placed export controls early in 2000 due to the concerns it was powerful enough to be used for image analysis, which is crucial for missile guidance. The export controls made it illegal for Sony to export consoles to Iran, Iraq, Libya and North Korea. If Iraq had the consoles, they would have had to have been obtained from another country. I have linked some articles in the description on the rumours but can find no evidence Saddam Hussein was ever able to build a supercomputer using them. Do you believe the rumours to be true and do you know of any other unique projects the PS2 was used in? Please do subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.